it is because that's the year that the first European arrived in Uganda territory and discovered the ancient Nile and also the lake he promptly named after his queen, Victoria. Granted, it is always, I imagine, quite a task to find and aggregate ancient histories and yet it seems to me that the ancient histories of other peoples are already available. For example, the Greek civilization, the Scandinavian Iron Age that led to the Viking Age, the Roman Empire, the, uh, and the Ottoman Empire. Could this be in part because these stories have moved from the restrictions of the halls of academia and from sterile sites and have been brought to life through art, through poetry and film? Perhaps mediums such as film help to visually capture history. I am grateful too to have been helped on this journey by some of our guests here tonight like Mr. James Tosime, Mr. Christopher Mohonzi, um, Senior Counsel Peter Molira, I'm not sure if he's here, um, Professor Lenigo, and Chief Justice Emeritus Benjamin Odokin. I'm also thankful for the written works of the late Professor Samuili Karutile, Edwin's father, whose work, which, which work has been very uh, of invaluable help throughout this process. And I am always learning from the detailed teachings of President Museveni through his many speeches. I extend my thanks and appreciation to all the distinguished people who afforded me and my team their time and insights and each of whom have added an essential thread that makes up the tapestry of this work. To mention a few other names, aside from those I have already stated, um, His Excellency President Yuri Museveni, uh, or the Honorable First Lady Mama Janet Museveni, Honorable Ruth Cheng, Honorable Jim Mwezi, Honorable Alice Kavoyo, General Ivan Coretta, Mrs. Allen Kajina, Honorable John Kawanga, and many others whom I will not name right now. I have been asked, why this story? And my response is, why not this story? If you one day woke up and found yourself in the middle of an ocean with no knowledge of how you got to that point, how would you be able to find your bearing to know even how to continue on that journey? This series we have documented aims to help us retrace the journey back to where we set off from as a nation so that we understand how we got to this place in time and so that with the Lord's help and guided by the vision of our president, we can begin to envision the port that we are sailing to. The series which will be airing on NBS, UBC and Urban TV and on social media platforms like YouTube and Twitter <clears throat> from Monday the 31st of July, this series is made up of eight parts. It has been my privilege, a privilege for me to work on this, to hear first-hand accounts of our elders, many of whom have been active participants in Uganda's incredible journey. However, tonight's film is an amalgamation, a summarized version of those eight parts, meaning numerous interviews aren't included, and the story is abridged for the purposes of screening. And I hope this director's cut whets your appetite for the entire series. I thank my team that has worked with me Agaba Mutabazi and Net Studios. I'm not sure where they are. Your work ethic is first class. Isaiah 60 has a fantastic group of young people to collaborate with now. Sheila Kabachala for being, being prayerful and steadfast throughout this process. Don Michael Cabonero for putting this wonderful event together and for the amazing soundtrack for the series. Well done. Thanks to Mrs. Alice Muhozi for being someone I can call on to work with and for guiding me at different points. Hippo Tuevaze for all your support for availing us with hard to find material. Thank you. I want to thank my parents for always being my encouragers. I'm forever grateful to Mzee and Mama for who they are to me. I'm fortunate also to have fellow sojourners in this life, in my siblings, one of whom is here today, Fadi, 
I'm so blessed to walk with you through the seasons. I thank and bless my family, my children who have cheered me on and prayed me on to the finish line. And I thank you, Edwin, for always being my wise guide, my support, and my cover. May the Lord bless you all for me, always. And finally, I bless the Lord my God, who is my source for all good things and to whom my service belongs. May the work of my hands be pleasing and acceptable to him. Thank you. I thought I was going back into the history of the war, but I didn't know that I was going to go into ambush, which has just happened to me because I didn't know I was going to speak. But I'm definitely very, very happy. And I wish to congratulate Natasha Karujiri for doing this. I watched the 27 guns, and when I entered, they asked me the difference between the two. And indeed, like the MC has just said, the feeling is that we are going to hear from those people who were there. And as Natasha uh, chose the, uh, the, the title, those among us, I think it means these are people who were like you are now and who were driven by the events of that time. So really, this is very interesting. And I'm very happy that this has happened because those of us who were there and who are uh, passing on one by one, but whenever that happens, you wonder whether the generation, the young generation and the future generations will ever know what we actually went through. So, this documentary is a recording and authentic because these are the people who were there and I believe that the young generations should take it, them in and understand the value of this transformation that has happened to our country. And I appeal to the youth to take interest to watch and uh, internalize everything that is being said because that is where the future of Uganda lies. So that we do not have a reason to go through what we went through. I thank you and wish you a good viewing. And members of parliament, our special guest, our executive producer, and uh, someone who is on Kameme, he told me, the one who produced <laughs> Edwin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you, Natasha, for helping us, the young generation. We have been running around, getting scant information, different tales. So for you to be able to leave whatever you are doing and decide to consolidate all this information into one documentary is extremely helpful, especially for us who never lived the bad times of those days. It will also help us to understand because these days, our generation, how we define peace, we define peace on whether you have access to social media, you define peace on whether you can go to club at 3 a.m., you define peace on whether you can drink yourself city and still find your way home, and also define peace on whether we can abuse responsive people, responsible people, and get away with it. That's how we define it. But that time, it was a matter of survival from what I've seen. Just talking about a mere private soldier wouldn't guarantee you another life, another day of life. This is going to really, really help. 
And um, I wish we could spread it in each and every way possible to reach out to the young people. But also, you know, our history is scanty, and I was sharing with the Chief Justice and the Attorney General, Ari Aron, and we are saying, write books, because I've seen very many Ugandan people, they find it much easier to read an American book, to read a book of Obama than reading a book of President Museveni. Who is reading you here? Now, what, what will you get from Obama? Very good quotes to talk about in parties, in bars. Because from President Museveni, at least you know one day, you know that, uh, how you can survive in Ruero. You, you will know how you can survive in your own country. But we find it easy, and you find it trendy. I've, I've even seen some leaders, they take selfies with books. I don't know whether they open the, even beyond the covers. Yeah? Of big people in the world. And, but you will leave one of someone who is defining your life here. So I want to encourage our people to read Ugandan content, content, to read authentic content, and see how best we can uh, build and support our own people. Finally, you see, I don't know if I had been Natasha, whether I would have really chosen to look around for these even common people, you struggle, you do what, no. Maybe I would have chosen a life of saying I'm uh, a first daughter, so I should be in Paris shopping, or I should be enjoying the best life in London. But for someone to be so humble and know, and know that I need to bring me, I might be having access to information, and this information I've managed to get access to it's very important for me to share it with the rest of the people so that we all share the story of our country. That's how you build patriotism. That's how you build patriotism. And really, that's how we shall ensure that we have a sustainable Uganda. Otherwise, looking at the Uganda of today without thinking about the Uganda, uh, Uganda of tomorrow won't help if we can't look at our history. And. Um, to know that today I'm even serious, I came with my wife for, for this, Mrs. Anita Taeba. I never involved her in such. You know, for us, Bachiga, we have authentic love. Uh, uh, what you see is what you get. She knows I love her. Even when I don't take on events, she knows I still love her. But today, for the excitement I had, I've come with her, and I'm really proud for the invitation. I thank you.